In a universe where the Marvel and Dungeons and Dragons world collide, a powerful artifact known as the Dice of Eternity is discovered. This artifact has the potential to change the fate of the multiverse, and now a team of heroes must band together to protect it from falling into the wrong hands. A group of adventurers stumbles upon an ancient temple deep in dense, mysterious forests. Inside, they discover the Dice of Eternity, an artifact that can alter reality with a single roll. The temple begins to crumble around them as they escape with the artifact. Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, senses the powerful magic of the Dice and seeks to protect it. He recruits the help of Thor, the mighty Asgardian god, and Iron Man, the genius inventor. These Marvel heroes encounter Venger, a powerful Dungeons and Dragons villain who seeks the Dice to reshape the multiverse in his image. They realize they need more help to face this formidable foe. Doctor Strange opens a portal to the Dungeons and Dragons world and brings forth iconic heroes, including Dritz de Worden, the legendary Drow Ranger, Minx, and his miniature giant space hamster Boo, Elminster, the wise arch mage. The heroes unite, forming a powerful team to protest the dice of eternity. Doctor Strange entrusts Elminster with safeguarding the artifact. Venger, in a bid to obtain the dice, unleashes his army of monsters, including orcs, goblins, demons, onto the Marvel world. The heroes train together, combining their unique powers and abilities to create new strategies to counter Venger's forces. The heroes face off against Venger's army in a series of epic battles, culminating in a massive battle against the villain himself. During this climatic battle, Venger manages to steal the dice of eternity from Elminster, but the heroes regroup and prepare to make a final stand. As Venger prepares to roll the dice and reshape reality, the heroes confront him one last time. In a dramatic moment, Iron Man unleashes his latest invention, the Arcane Buster Armor, which merges magic and technology. The heroes unite their powers and fight Venger in a fierce battle. The heroes are successful in defeating Venger, but the dice is damaged in the process. The die is damaged in the process. Who wrote this? Die. If it's only one, it's a die. Anyway. But the die is damaged in the process, causing a tear in the fabric of reality. Doctor Strange and Elminster combine their powers to repair the tear, sealing it and preventing further damage to the multiverse. The heroes celebrate their victory, and the Dungeons and Dragons characters return to their world, forging a lasting bond between universes. The Dice of Eternity die. is placed under the protection of the powerful alliance, and the heroes of both worlds vow to stand together against any future threat. The Marvel heroes return to Earth, ready to face new challenges and protect their realm. The story ends with the promise of more adventures to come, leaving the door open for future Marvel slash Dungeons and Dragons crossovers. This outline has several weaknesses that contribute to its lack of a strong storyline or character growth, which can be attributed to the fact that it was generated by an AI language model. First, there is a lack of depth and complexity. The outline primarily focuses on the basic premise and the conflict surrounding the die, die of eternity. It's a one, it's a die. Die. It lacks complexity and nuance that would make the story more engaging and memorable. There is a lack of character development. The characters in the outline are mostly introduced in terms of their abilities and roles within the team, rather than showing their personal journeys, motivations, and growth. A compelling story should have dynamic characters who evolve over the course of the narrative. There is also an overemphasis on action. While action and battles can be an essential part of superhero stories or Dungeons and Dragons stories, the outline primarily consists of just a series of fights and confrontations with little room for quieter character-driven moments. The focus on action prevents the exploration of deeper themes from relationships and conflicts that could provide a more engaging and emotionally resonant story. In addition, the exploration of the crossover concept is limited. The outline does bring the characters from Marvel and Dungeons and Dragons universes together. It does not, however, delve into the unique aspects of this crossover or explore how the characters' different backgrounds and experience could influence their interactions, conflicts, and their growth. These issues arise from the fact that this is an AI-generated text created by ChatGPT, lacking in nuanced understanding, creativity, and the emotional intelligence of the human writer. AI-generated text can often produce coherent and relevant content, but it may struggle to create complex, emotionally engaging narratives that showcase character development and depth. And that is why I want to talk to you about some Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves or Dad Hat Reviews. So the D&D movie, Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, Dad Hat, has been out officially for a week now. Though it has been generally well-reviewed, there are a few negative reviews. One claimed that the movie might as well have been written by OpenAI's GPT-4, which is quite timely. It might as well use a non-argument that the broader world is misunderstanding to completely misunderstand the movie. 
That article claimed the problem was that the movie is too much like Guardians of the Galaxy. Have you seen the first one of those? It's a formulaic movie, right down to Chris Pratt's character breakdancing in Act 3. It's the Lego movie with the names crossed out and Marvel names scribbled in. This is a criticism that doesn't understand either OpenAI or the need for movies that follow a formula. And with a new and typical IP like D&D to bring more people into the tent, we need to start with a story structure we already know. So this critique seemed out of touch with how stories work and what the problem with ChatGPT actually is. It's being hailed as something more than the messy, often incorrect search engine that it is, one that spits out incorrect and often inscrutable information based on user input. See, for example, a D&D Marvel movie that I started this video with. However, in looking at a few more of the reviews, there was a phrase that stood out, a common thread in almost every one of the negative reviews. It was by no means a bad movie. So, what was the criticism? It seemed that these critics wanted some high fantasy prestige drama, but that's not the game this movie is based on. This is a game where a group of people sit around a table of some kind and hallucinate being different people. It's silly. It's supposed to be. This is a game derived from war games where characters slowly began to be played by people rather than just a side joke about a mangled miniature. This is a game where you can be who you want to be and pretty much everyone uses the game to work out their trauma. In D&D the movie is certainly about working out trauma. In fact, the meta-level message of the movie that family is who we decide to let into our hearts despite our trauma, that family is the team that we build, is literally what the game is all about. Both in the game fiction and in the out-of-game story we tell as we get together with other people. Every night, people get together with friends they may not have met without slinging a few dice together, tell a series of awful jokes, play into cliches and against cliches, and just generally create a community. The very fact of sitting down at a table where we all agree we are pretending means that those who play the game have more understanding of reality than those who don't. As Baudrillard said, the only real place is Disneyland because we all agree that it is fake, that it is a show. So it is with Dungeons and Dragons. So what were the critics' concerns? The movie has too many jokes. So does the game day. The CGI is wonky. The magic items are MacGuffins that lead the characters from quest to quest until the story resolves. That's D&D. Those very things are why this movie captures the spirit of the game. Yes, the moral of the story is something we've seen a thousand times before. Yes, the CGI isn't always the best. But so what? We got a fat dragon. Sometimes you can't find your mini, so you slap a potato chip on a battle mat and forget that that was representing you a little bit later and accidentally eat yourself. As for lurching from point to point, that's what the game is actually like. You try different things, play your character different ways, follow plots that don't resolve. You play your character differently, and most importantly, you fail over and over and over until you succeed. Were you killed in the Battle of the Everlords? Yes. Formal question, right? Yes. No, no, no that, that wasn't for you. Did that count as a question? Yes. Damn it. Only answer when I talk to you, okay? Yes. Why did you say okay at the end of that? I didn't. That's another one of those pesky themes of the game. In a recent stand-up special, Andrew Santino explains that he wants to be a cheeseburger. It's no good for you, not really, but it's satisfying. At a local D&D night tonight, someone suggested that this movie was about 7-10 on such a scale. In other words, the movie's a cheeseburger. That's why it works. D&D isn't just about the story you play. Sure, that takes precedence, and we care and share our table tales. But D&D, or any other role-playing game, is about working together. It's about the community that the game creates. It's all about with whom you sling your dice. The people who lean into cliches to play against them, but are their own variations of all that has come before. New spins on old formula. A comedy tonight. And the movie itself says exactly the same. a paladin that is slightly less annoying. 